it's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. Hey guys! Okay, so once again, this week is going to be a really short week. Um, mostly because it's kind of hard to pinpoint um, story arcs in the Hulk story because he changes writers so often. Like, it, there are probably more writers for Hulk comics than are, there are writers for all other comics combined. <laughs> um, so trying to pinpoint story arcs, it's really, really difficult because a lot of the story arcs get cancelled about halfway through and so you don't necessarily know the answer or the real answer and so it gets really confusing. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be like last week where it's just a short, simple, sweet little video um, with me telling you what is the most important, I guess. Um, and really, Bruce's storyline, like, it's not as important as the metaphor it presents. Um, so, we will definitely be getting more into that than we will his actual story arc. Um, but yeah. So, last week we talked about the Thor, and I didn't post a video last night, mostly because I wasn't feeling well. Um... Tallahassee is having some crazy weather changes right now and pressure changes and that always causes really really bad pressure headaches for me um, so I just was not feeling up to it last night. I loved your guys' responses I just I didn't want to make a video. Um, that will happen every now and then and I'm sorry for it but when my head feels like it's being split in two by Mjolnir, I tend to not want to make videos for the internet. Um, but yeah, so I'm sorry about that, but you guys did an awesome job. I loved your responses and your insight into mythology in the Marvel comics. It was really fascinating. You guys are awesome with these responses. Like, you guys are on the ball. Um, but yeah, um, the, oh, also one more thing, um, <laughs> I was having issues last week trying to figure out what to actually tell you guys about because Thor's story arcs are very kind of separate from the Avengers and I really didn't want to confuse you, um, but I think it's best summed up in a text that I got from Alex actually when I was complaining about what to put into the video. She texted me, um, of course it was after the fact because it's never before. <laughs> so it was after I had filmed everything and kind of narrowed it down when she kind of put the Thor comics into perspective um, as to his association with the Avengers. He's either there in full or not there at all. <laughs> And so, that pretty much is Thor's relation to the Avengers. Yes, they are his brothers in arms, but if he's not there, he's not there. Like, there is no halfway with Thor's presence. I mean, it's a god. <laughs> kind of how things go. So, um, that sums up last week. Um, also, since I didn't post the video, the response video... Um, you don't get the This Week in Marvel, but I will tell you that Chris Pratt, I think it was, was actually just cast in um, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is summed up best by my friend Kate, who says, Now all we have to do is wait and hope for the Chris Trifecta shirtless pillow fight scene in Avengers 2. I pray to God that that happens. That would be the greatest thing in the entire world. Joss would forever be a god in my eyes if he were to include that. Um, which also, he was signed on for Avengers 2, in case you guys didn't know that. So Joss is coming back. Yay! Crossover movies. Yay! Um, so yeah. 
<laughs> but that takes care of last week, sums everything up, gives you guys a little hint into what's coming up in the movie world for Marvel. Um, and so yeah, let's get started on Bruce Banner. Okay, so the Hulk, um, it was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, um, and he was first introduced in the comic, The Incredible Hulk, um, dated May 1962. Um, he is a gigantic green, um, irradiated mutant humanoid monster with incredible strength and an inability to control his rage. Um, that is the clinical description of who the Hulk is. Um, he's sometimes depicted in the comics as childlike and naive. Um, that kind of like plays off the fact that anger when unchecked makes you stupid kind of thing, you know? People don't think when they're angry, which causes craziness to ensue. Um, but um, he also is seen um, and portrayed um, as hyper-aggressive and brutal, um, cunning, brilliant, and scheming. Um, so there are multiple facets of the Hulk's character. This just plays into the different writers of the Hulk. Each writer brings in a different set of characteristics, different set of personalities, different background stories, and I mean, it's the background that makes up how the character reacts. Um, and so, different writers, different backgrounds, different everything. Um, but I mean, he's kept the same image pretty much the entire time, um, which is awesome. Other than the fact that he started out gray, and then because the comics were so, the way that they printed the comics, they couldn't get a um, steady um, shading color of gray. Um, it would fade from really dark to really light to sometimes a greenish color um, that Stanley just gave up and he's like, you know what, just make him green. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's kind of funny how those things work. And Stan Lee, um, he wrote this character as a kind of a combination of um, Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, he stated in um, interviews that he always um, kind of sympathized with um, the Frankenstein monster um, in the uh, old movie. Um, I think it was the wasn't the Bill Bix because that was the original Dr. Banner um, in the TV show. Um, the original Boris Karloff um, Frankenstein. Um, he wasn't a bad guy. He was the good guy. It was the, um, he didn't want to hurt anybody. It was those idiots with torches that kept running up and down the mountains chasing him and getting him angry. Um, those are Stan Lee's words when um, talking about Frankenstein's monster in the original movie. And that sentiment carried over into his creation of the Hulk, um, which is seen a lot. Um, Hulk um, is chased and persecuted because of what he is and um, because he is seen as a monster. Um, people are scared of him because of that. And he um, reacts in the only way he knows how to, and that is strong emotional responses. Um, his anger um, causes him to destroy things, um, which is actually a really cool kind of comment on it. Um, but Stan Lee also commented and said that um, the golem of Jewish mythology um, was kind of also another re point of reference, um, and if you guys never heard of it. Um, the golem is kind of like a, um, well not kind of like, he is a um, clay monster. Um, he's formed out of clay and then blessed by different rabbis of the Jewish faith and then it gains um, the ability to protect. Um, and for Stanley, I, and at that time, I think that's quite a commentary on the feelings of the people. 
um, or at least of Stan, um, because Stanley is Jewish. Um, he and his family were, um, and so pulling that from his childhood in a time of war and creating a protector of sorts that is has the form of a monster. I, it's really fascinating. Um, thumbs up for Stan Lee. <laughs> um, of course, I don't have enough thumbs to give up, give enough thumbs up for Stan, but it's another thing. <laughs> um, also, the issue with the radiation, um, that was kind of everybody's fear at that time because um, during the time of the creation of the Hulk, it was um, the 60s and right during um, the emergence of radiation and studies on radiation, nobody knew what was going on, nobody knew what would actually happen, and so they kind of assumed that, assumed the worst and thought that monsters and mutants could come from radiation, and the Hulk was kind of the culmination of that fear, um, but he was also used as a thing for good, um, so yeah, it was... It's fascinating the way that these things work out. Um, but yeah, the original series was actually canceled after six issues, um, and it has come back and been canceled and come back and been canceled. And Hulk actually, after the first series was canceled, um, he went on to um, guest star in Fantastic Four comics. Um, also in uh, the start of the Avenger comics, he was in there. He was one of the founding members. Um, and then he was gone for a little while. Then he came back as a foe in the third issue. Then in, an ally in the fifth. And that kind of story arc is explained a little bit easier um, in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, um, the comic or not comic, cartoon series um, that we'll be watching later on in the semester. Um, it really does help you understand, like, story-wise, um, how all of these story arcs kind of mesh together, um, which is really important to what we're doing. So, that will definitely be a help to finishing off the <laughs> this uh, course on the Avengers. Um, but yeah, he was also in The Amazing Spider-Man um, during that time. Um, the Hulk kind of goes all over the place um, because he doesn't have his own comic series. Um, then, uh, da -da 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 -da. he goes on and he's in Tales to Astonish, um, the comic um, and that was a year and a half after the series was canceled. Um, he doesn't get his own comic un again until... Mm, where's that date? The 70s was whenever it first um, came back. Um, so he had a long run of not having his own comic. Um, it was also revealed um, during the late 60s, early 70s, like before he got his own comic again, um, his, Dr. Banner's issues with anger stems from child abuse, um, and uh, the... Uh, because of that, he was, um, he had to repress his feelings, um, as a child, which carried over into adulthood, and so whenever he got exposed to the radiation, um, from the atomic bomb going off that he was testing, because it was actually a bomb of his own creation that went off, um, and he had to go save this kid who wandered onto the test course, um, and he got a brunt, the brunt of the um, radiation. Um, he turned into the Hulk, um, which is triggered by um, strong emotional responses, um, which 
you know, it's a commentary on repressing your feelings and them exploding. Um, kind of like the soda bottle, if you shake it up and then um, it explodes. So yeah, enough pressure can make anything... Um, but yeah, so that goes on. He has a tragic love with Betty Ross. They're together. She dies. She comes back to life. They rekindle their love. All of these things happen. It's crazy. Um, but he has pretty much carried a torch for Betty Ross the entire time of his publication. Um, I don't think there were ever instances of him loving someone else. Um, but yeah. Um, in issues, um, one, 180 and 181 of The Incredible Hulk, um, whenever it was revamped in the 70s, actually introduces the character of Wolverine, um, which I found really fascinating, the fact that he was introduced in a Hulk comic, not an X-Men comic. Um, but hey, just goes to show you um, <laughs> what can come of these characters. Um, I mean, Black Widow was originally a villain for Iron Man, and now she's a member of the Avengers, being portrayed by the beautiful Scarlett Johansson. Um, so, <laughs> who the hell knows with comics? <laughs> um, but yeah, and then in the 80s and 90s, um, they introduced a character known as the She-Hulk, um, which is actually Jennifer Walters, uh, Dr. Banner's uh, cousin. Um, Stanley created her um, to go along with that. Um, but her mutation stems from getting a blood transfusion from Bruce. Um, he gave her some of his blood in a transfusion, and that irradiated her entire body. And so she now transforms into a form of the Hulk. Of course, she's feminine rather than masculine. But she is actually able to retain her intellect, her personality, um, but her inhibitions are noticeably lowered. So it's kind of like she's drunk, but she's still incredibly smart and has her same personality. So, and she's green. So, I guess it's not really like being drunk. Unless you turn green when you're drunk. And I'm not that kind of drunk. So, I would really know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um... Let's see. -na 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 -na. And the child abuse, um, not it's not a trope, but that backstory has kind of become the most accepted backstory to how um, like situations built up to the point of the um, Hulk being the effect. You know, because um, I mean, psychologically, there has to be a reason for this immense explosion of rage. Um, and so the child abuse, um, it kind of stems from that. It, it, that is generally the most um, accepted explanation. Um, and the child abuse, it was not necessarily that Bruce was abused, but he, um, his parents, his father was um, abusive to his mother. He would um, get incredibly angry and beat his mother. Um, and so Bruce witnessed this and witnessed um, his father's severe mood swings and mood changes, um, which caused him to internalize that um, and his fear of his father's mood swings caused him to not ever want to have mood swings, so he would repress his feelings, um, and of course, repression is always bad. Um, I've learned that the hard way. Um, but um, that is what eventually leads to the Hulk. Um, the irradiation feeds on um, Bruce's repressed emotions. 
allowing the Hulk to be triggered by a loss of control of his emotions. So, it all makes sense in a psychological sense, in the sense of comic logic. Um, but even so, it does make sense. Um, but yeah. Um, they also play around in the late 80s, early 90s, um, that Bruce may actually have dissociative, dissociative identity disorder, um, mul multiple personalities disorder. Um, and that lends to different fractions of the Hulk. Um, there's three specific ones, like there's Banner, um, Joe Fix It, which was written as the Grey Hulk, um, the original Grey Hulk was now a separate identity, um, and then the Savage Green Hulk. Um, and in the early 90s, um, there's a story arc involving hypnosis, which caused all three of them to merge into one personality with the intelligence of Bruce Banner, the cunning of um, the Grey Hulk, and um, the power of the Green Hulk. Um, which is an interesting idea. Um, just not entirely psychologically sound. At least in psychology as studied now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's also an issue, um, a series, an arc of, um, in like 93, where, um, it's a dystopian society that the Hulk is ruling over, um, <laughs> and he calls himself Maestro, and he rules over a world where all, nearly all the heroes are dead, um, and only Rick Jones, which is actually the teenager that Bruce Banner saved um, whenever he got turned into the Hulk, um, well, he, when he got irradiated, because he doesn't immediately turn into the Hulk. His, that does not surface, that effect of the irradiation does not surface until, oh, 24 to 48 hours after the fact. Um, but yeah. Um, and then he seems to die in that arc, but then he comes back later, and it's confusing as hell. Um, that's the deal with Hulk comics. Like, with Thor's comics, he just wasn't really present on Earth for a lot of the Avengers stuff. Um, but the Hulk stuff, it doesn't make sense because it's hard to unite all of the writers and the different story arcs and the different personalities of the Hulk into one. Um, to see with like Steve and Tony and Thor, their personalities generally stay the same and the characterizations of them generally stay the same throughout all of it. Um, and the story arcs add to that. Um, the writers all seem to kind of not exactly coexist because they all write at different times, but more of the fact that they're all on the same page when it comes to the characters. While in Hulk, every writer has a different opinion as to the effects of the irradiation and the effects of Banner's psychological state, um, which causes there to be this kind of disconnect between all of the comics, so once again, it's hard to kind of mesh it all together. Because um, you don't know what to pay attention to, what not to pay attention to, and it's confusing. It is confusing as hell, man. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking is when I'm, re and when I'm talking and when I'm giving this lecture this week, because I just, I don't really know what to tell you guys. Because um, it's hard to kind of unite everything. Um, okay, so I think I need to tell you guys about one arc, which is the most important arc, um, which is actually it's The Incredible Hulk Volume 4, and it started in October um, 2011. Um, so it's a relatively recent story arc, 
Um, but, um, and at the beginning of this series, Hulk and Banner have somehow been separated into two different identities. Um, sorry, not identities, um, bodies. They were separated, no longer contained in the same body. Um, and the Hulk has been living as a hunter um, for an underground tribe of Maloids in Subterranea. Basically, it was hunting down people, catching things. Um, the family business. <laughs> God, I'm watching too much Supernatural. Um, but anyway, Bruce Banner, um, during this time, actually um, becomes a crazy, deranged scientist living on a island and conducting experiments trying to get the Hulk back. Um, and so Hulk works with the MAD squad um, to stop Banner. Um, and a flashback reveals to them that Dr. Doom was responsible for um, performing different surgeries that separated Hulk from Banner. Um, and basically the conclusion of this storyline, this story arc, um, is that Banner was destroyed by the blast from a gamma bomb that he made to try and get the Hulk back. But because of his close pers close proximity to Hulk, they somehow merge together. Kind of like with Harry Potter, um, whenever he was a baby, when Voldemort came and killed his parents, um, whenever he tried to kill Harry, um, and how his a piece of his soul actually attached to Harry, and so Harry was the unknown Horcrux. Sorry, major spoiler, it's for the Harry Potter movies if you haven't seen it, but if you haven't seen them, what the hell are you doing on the internet? You have to watch the Harry Potter movies before you can come onto the internet. Who didn't tell you this? Um, but anyway, so Banner's uh, soul, the remains of his soul, basically attached themselves to uh, the Hulk. Um, and so it's a reversal of their original arrangement where it was Banner who would become the Hulk, but now it's Hulk who becomes Banner every now and then. Um, and, um, so Hulk is the dominant personality, um, while Banner is one of the sub-personalities. Um, and it also is revealed that Banner was looking, um, for a way to cure himself of the Hulk, which is kind of confusing, because, I mean, he just went through this whole thing to try and get the Hulk back, um, but I think it was more of a way, at this point, Banner was not used to being the sub-personality and only being allowed out at certain times that he got jealous and was trying to figure out a way to get rid of the Hulk so he could be the dominant personality again. Um, but um, when the Hulk confronts Banner um, using weird video relay system, it's confusing as hell, comic logic um, and comic technology. <laughs> Um, Hulk and Banner kind of talk it out, and Banner says that he was never going to use the cure. He realizes um, that and accept, realized and has accepted the fact that the Hulk made him a better person than he would have been um, if he had remained himself. Um, that, like, accepting their joint destiny um, was his way of becoming a good for society, um, because if he had been left, um, as an emotionally repressed physicist, he could have possibly become a supervillain at some point. You never know. Um, <laughs> it's how those things generally work out. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the Hulk saved him, in a way, um, which is a really awesome kind of way to view it because the Hulk represents a um, releasal of emotions and losing emotional control which in a way is cathartic um, and helpful to people. Um, that is always something to remember. Um, you can't keep your emotions all bottled up like Bruce Banner. You have to let him out in controlled burst which um, is actually kind of displayed in the comics. Um, it's easier to control the Hulk whenever Banner lets him out to play more often kind of mentality, you know? Um, but yeah, it 
it's a balance of the emotional outburst and the controlled not repression because repression's bad, guys. Remember that. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, so that I think is the most important arc that I need to tell you guys about. Um, I'm gonna link you to the Wikipedia page. Um, you can read things on there. Um, it's not as detailed because it switched writers so often, like, it's hard to keep track of what all happens, you know? But yeah. Um, also, when talking about the Hulk, we need to talk about military. Um, because the Hulk has been pretty much the subject of a witch hunt um, his entire strain of comics um, by the U.S. military. Um, that kind of shows not necessarily a distrust in the military, but an acknowledgement that the military is not always right and it is prone to rash actions. Um, and to have this um, be in the backstory of a character written at the time of the Cold War, um, that, once again, I mean, it shows that the, the audience's kind of distrust of the military and of the government, but also recognizing that they are the main power, kind of, in a way. It's, it's hard to reconcile the two. Um, but yeah, he was used kind of kind of as a way for the writers, but also the audience, to um, display their frustrations with the Vietnam War and the Vietnam involvement, um, the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Because um, you got to remember, at this time, like, during the time that a lot of these characters are introduced, you are at the very beginning of the Cold War, like, just when it kind of, like, got really going, like where paranoia was incredibly high and nobody knew what was going on. Everybody was scared of the different um, scientific um, leaps and bounds that were made at the time. Nobody was sure of what was going on and this was the time people were building bomb shelters and bunkers in the case of a nuclear attack in their backyards. So I mean, this is a very paranoid time and the Hulk was kind of a response to it, and a lot of these characters were a response to this war. Um, but yeah, um, it was quoted um, in Marvel, Five, Fabul Five Fabulous Decades of World's Greatest Comics um, by Les Daniels, um, which is actually a pretty decent book. Um, I would definitely recommend it. Um, he addresses the Hulk as an embodiment of cultural fears of radiation and nuclear sciences. Um, the Hulk became Marvel's most disturbing embodiment of the perils inherent in the atomic age. Um, everybody was scared what was going to happen, like, if an atomic bomb went off, if a nuclear bomb went off, if nuclear war happened. Like, they were scared of what was going to result from that. Um, and the Hulk was kind of a symbol of their fear um, that became their strongest heroes almost um, but his uncontrollable nature it just it was showing the fear of the age um, but yeah that I think is what I can teach you about the Hulk next week and the week after are gonna be a whole lot more interesting because I know for a fact that I can give you a much better understanding of the two um, superheroes that we're going to be talking about, Natasha and Clint, um, Hawkeye and Black Widow. Um, I know for a fact that I can give you guys a better storytelling of that because their stories don't change writers every other week like the Hulk and they are present on Earth and involved in the Avengers quite heavily. Um, unlike Thor. So, next week is going to end the very short videos. Um, I'm sorry, but you're going to have the um, plus side to that is I love these people.
these characters are my favorites. They're my babies. And so you're going to have me fangirling the entire time. So hopefully that's a bit more um, interesting to watch than me sitting here trying to figure out what the hell to tell you. So <laughs> that is this week's video lecture. Um, your responses this week. Um, I think I'm going to change what I have on the syllabus to have it be... Um, the uh, psychological state of Dr. Banner being the subject of the response. So, you talking about how um, the abuse of his childhood um, led to his repression of his emotions as an adult, which led to the um, effect that the irradiation had on him. So, this week's going to be psychology rather than military, which we've actually already kind of discussed, so. Well, that is it. Goodbye. <laughs> That's done. Toodles.